before I say anything else this evening, I would just like to apologise to the fact that I have a cold. So therefore, I may not sound quite as clear as I would have liked this evening. Which reminds me, Thomas, what is faster, hot, hot or cold? I don't know. Which? Hot, because you can catch a cold. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. On behalf of my team, I would like to welcome you all here on this very chilly November evening. I would also like to thank the Rotary Organisation for arranging this event year after year, as it is a brilliant opportunity for young people to become more experienced and confident of public speaking. Our team speaker this evening is Amelia Winnie, who will be speaking on the subject, Are Books Extinct? She is well qualified to speak on this subject, as she is well read and has much experience of reading from electronic gadgets. She is also an avid reader and a talented writer, and I know that she will inspire you on this very well-researched topic. On my left is our team's proposer, Thomas, who also enjoys reading and using the computer in all its many forms, having read To Kill a Mockingbird, Pride and Prejudice, and many other fantastic classics earlier on this year. Now, without further ado, I would like to hand over to our team speaker, Amelia. Our books becoming extinct. We live in an age of technological revolution. Without doubt, electronics make our world fast moving, accessible and fun. But will the price for this be losing the enjoyment of reading books? With Kindles, Kobos and Samsung e-readers starting to dominate the reading world, we must ask ourselves the questions. Are books becoming extinct? And even Will reading become an unnecessary skill to learn in the future? According to the Times newspaper, today, 17% of British school leavers cannot read. Will it soon be 70% because people will all simply talk to their electronic gadgets that will do the reading for them? But there is hope. The attention span of the human brain is about 90 seconds. Why is this significant? Attention lapses after 90 seconds may only be small things like glancing out of the window or suddenly remembering that last week's maths homework is due in that day. Or while reading, you might miss the page where Mr. Darcy and Elizabeth Bennet get romantic and totally lose the plot. Whatever <laughs> the cause, human life is shrouded in distractions. Recent studies have proven that when reading a book, you can concentrate for longer. You are in control of the speed at which you take in information. This helps you to not get stressed or confused. So as I have been talking for about 90 seconds, perhaps we all need a break. <laughs> so isn't it easier and cheaper than buying a library to just buy a Kindle that can hold more than 1,000 books and you can take it everywhere with you. And using the Kindle's built-in light, you can read after dark, when conventional books require a not very portable upgrade, the bedside lamp. Then, if you wanted to go on holiday, taking even 10% of the books contained in the Kindle if you tried an, uh, sorry, your 100 book face would require strong wheels, and if you tried to lift that weight into the overhead lock of a plane, this might just cause an international incident. All this seems to be leading to the conclusion that technology is starting to overtake our previous source of, source of information, books. And now, if we want to know something, we can simply search online and the infamous Google will tell us just about everything about anything. And news, encyclopedias, information, information and advertising are all available electronically. So isn't the world of LOLs and text language taking over? Perhaps Google can tell us. What Google does tell us is that in 2012, 15 million books were published worldwide. That's a lot of paper and a lot of forests. It seems we cannot yet write off books, am I right? 
When I was five, one of my fondest memories was having a book on my lap with one of my parents beside me, helpfully encouraging me to read at a fluent rate. And of course, if those books had been replaced with a lifeless, cold machine, the magic would have been lost. So I think that stories, whether the tiger that came to tea or Pride and Prejudice, will be around in their original book form for as long as people want to buy them and read them and pass them on for the next generations to experience. We human apes seem to be programmed to progress and to communicate. Originally with symbols, then writing, the printing press, and most recently through electronics. Today, these electronic gadgets can make reading superfluous but human apes also have a strong sense of tradition, and books and reading are an important part of our heritage. So my conclusion is a winners all round scenario. As these electronics replace the use of paper and save the forests of our pillaged and polluted planet, progressively fewer books will be published, but books will not become extinct. Thank you, Amelia, for your very intriguing speech. I'm sure that the audience will all go home with your very fascinating facts whizzing around in their minds. Now I'd like to invite a question from the audience. Uh, Amelia, I'd like to ask, uh, what do you think would be the biggest downside if books actually did go extinct? Well, as I've said in my speech, there are many benefits to reading, such as um, a magical experience, which all of us have experienced. And if these books would become extinct, then I think that things like TV and um, iPads and gadgets would replace the use of this. So I think it would be an experience that many children would miss. Thank you. Thank you for that very thought-provoking question, and I hope that Amelia is satisfied you with your answer. <coughs> now I'd like to invite Thomas to propose the vote of thanks. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Amelia's choice of speech was an extremely interesting topic, one which is especially relevant in this age of technological revolution. As Amelia said, Kindles and e-readers are taking over the market as they are able to store an entire library on a machine that is smaller than a standard book. She persuaded us all that even though times are changing, our love of literature is not. Perhaps a process of evolution in terms of the way we read is necessary in order to fuel our two desires, which is to read good literature and use modern gadgets more suited to our busy lives. Being part of a team in this competition really helps boost your confidence, and an experience like this will stay with me forever. I would like to say on behalf of my team that we have all learned a great deal. I thought the question posed by the gentleman in the audience was relevant and prompted an informative response from Amelia. It opened up another avenue as yet unexplored, and I'm sure she would have liked longer to consider and formulate a more detailed answer. I would like to thank the Rotary for giving me at their time each year to state this event. I think they have done a marvellous job, and I'm sure all the teams here have enjoyed themselves immensely. I would also like to thank the catering staff of Sherlock Prep, who put out the lovely or who have put out the lovely juice and crisps. Now, I would like to leave you with one last thought. What do you call your Kindle once you've bought a bookcase? Or what do you call your bookcase bookshelf once you've bought the Kindle? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>